In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use the Webmin administration utility for Linux to use, to use it to do backups for your system. Now, backups are a very important part of our day-to-day -day business, so we want to make sure that we know how to do that. And Webmin gives us a great interface to allow that action. So we take a look at my computer. We'll go ahead and jump right to it. First thing we need to do is to make sure that we install the dump utility. This is a command line utility, so we will be opening up a terminal to make sure that's installed. But once that's done, the uh, Webmin utility should do just fine after that. We don't need to go back to using the terminal any longer. So I come to my computer and let's open that terminal up. Once I get it open, that one's a little small. Increase the font size for you here. Give me just one second. There we go. That should make it a little easier for us to read. So that now we need that dump utility. So I'm going to have to elevate my privileges because I am installing software. So I'm going to use the sudo command plus the apt get install command for that dump utility. So I just do sudo apt dash get install dump. And this is just a command line utility that allows you to do backups inside of Linux. It is asking for my password to elevate those privileges. So I'll give it that. Hopefully I type that correctly. Yeah, one more time. And that should get us going. There we go. Now it's seeing that it has the dump command. I'm gonna get that installed. Looks like it's already done, so I should be good to go. So if you haven't installed that, make sure you do that first. And now we can use Webmin. I should be able to go ahead and close my terminal. I won't need it anymore. What I will need is a browser. Any browser will do because this is a web-based administration tool. So I'm just gonna open up Firefox for myself. Once that fires up, I'll go up here into my web address area so that I can put in the IP address of my server, or if you know the host name of your server as well, that will also do. Now you will need to know the port number to get into Webmin, which is 10,000. We're gonna to have to add that to it. For me though, it is just, uh, my IP address is https colon forward slash forward slash 10.1.230 and look at that, it's already saved that, good for me. And notice that the colon 10,000 is on the end, making sure that it specifies that number 10,000 port number. So I hit return, should take me to my login screen and that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in as root because we are performing some administrative functions. I will want root privileges at that point. So I'm gonna type in root and type in root's password. Once I hit log in, it takes me to the intro screen here for Webmin. I start seeing a lot of cool information about my system, but we're worried about taking a backup today. So what we need to do is go to the left-hand side and look for system. That's what we're going for. If you click system underneath that, you get a lot of different options, but today we're looking for file system backup. If I click on file system backup, it's gonna ask me a few things. Fairly straightforward interface. One is add a new backup of directory. That's what we wanna do. So I'm gonna click add a new backup of directory. Oh, I'm sorry, first thing I need to do is actually give it a directory in which we need to back up. I'll choose uh, any old random, maybe a documents folder just for the testing purposes. Otherwise, you probably are doing your root folder, any uh, important type stuff, maybe your Etsy, ETC folder. Those are always good ones to back up. So you can either use the graphical interface or you can type in the path that you want. I'll go ahead and use the graphical interface here just to show you that. So if I scroll down, I think I'll just use my, let's see here, where's my home? There we go. I'll use my home. Just double click that and then double click my uh, my own directory there and I will back up my documents folder. So if I click that and I just come down here and click OK, you'll notice that the field is already filled in for me and I can click OK. That is the directory in which we wish to back up. So now we should be able to hit that add new backup of a directory and it'll take us to the next screen. That's what we're looking for here. So now we need to say backup to and that's, that's where we're going to here. You'll notice that this backup format is going into the ext4 file system. That's a Linux type file system. And the directory is here. Now here we are, the backup to a file or tape device. This is going to be your default. And for our purposes, that's what we're gonna wanna choose as well. Now here, we need to specify a file name. Where do we want to save this backup to? Now we can choose a path using the GUI, but it won't choose a file name you do need to give it an actual file name in which you wish to save it as, but we can give it anything arbitrary that we like. So here, I think I'll go ahead and save that. I've actually created a small partition on a separate hard drive. Remember, backups don't do a good job if you're backing up to the same drive. So I'm actually backing up to a different drive. In case my drive fails, I wanna get those files back. 
that dri that drive is still good to go. So I'll type in slash mnt slash backup. And it's actually ckup. And then I'll call it uh, backup one. And that should do what it we need to do. If we were doing this over the network, we have those options as well here. And you'll notice that we have remote command backup as well. We don't have to worry about that for the purposes of this demonstration. Just know that they're there. If you want to do SSH, it has the password as well. Then we have some backup options down here at the bottom. And what do you want to do with your backup? How, how do you want to set it up? Normally, you can just stick with the defaults here. I think that uh, that's how I'm going to do it. It's asking, do you want to split uh, multiple files? So if you have a very large file, maybe you want to make it a little bit smaller, you could do that. Do you want to set a backup label? That might be a good thing. Maybe I want to call this backup one as well and just give that label there. Now we have these dump levels. That's part of the dump command utility. The default will work for you as well. Here, let's see your compressed data. No, we don't need to compress anything. Let's see here, uh, going through, just making sure all the options look good. Remount, we don't have to worry about any of that. Any extra command line parameters we want to throw at that dump command, we could inject those here. But like I said, we should be good to go. Now, you can also set up a schedule for your backups. We have the backup scheduling uh, system right below that. So if I wanted to take a backup of this directory once a day or once a week or once a month, I could set that here. But for this purposes, we'll just leave it as a one-time thing. At this point, we want to go ahead and create and backup now. Hopefully, if everything's done right, it should go ahead and create the backup job and run the backup job. So we'll go ahead and click that. And now it says it's performing a backup of this and saving it in this folder. The backup is complete. I should be able to return to the backups list. And now I have a backup system in creation. If I ever wanted to run that again, I could just click on it and click run at that point. But now we need to verify the backup was actually created. So I'm going to open up our terminal yet again. We know we love our terminal. Go ahead and increase that font size for us. And I'm going to go to the partition where I saved that backup. I'm going to cd into the mnt directory and the backup folder. If I look in there, I do see right here, there's backup one. So now if I lose my documents folder, I should be able to restore from the backup. And that, my friends, is how you back up using the Webmin administration tool.